We've had drive-through graduations, drive-by food banks, and drive-in communion services. But this particular drive-through just may be a first. Hi, I'm Connie Vanderman Jeffrey, and this is All God's People. Like most of our churches, the Brazilian Los Angeles Church has been meeting virtually for nearly six months, and the congregation hasn't met together since mid-March. But in May, that all changed, at least temporarily, when members gathered for a drive through baby shower for Nayana Borgi and Ishmael Sanchez. The couple was new to the area and had no family nearby. So the women's ministry team planned a special and safe celebration to shower the couple with love as they prepared for the birth of their daughter, Antonella. The special event took two weeks to organize. The women's ministry team made calls to the entire congregation, created a list of items needed, and arranged for cards, balloons, and welcome signs. About 15 people participated, and others sent gifts and well wishes to avoid crowding. Nayana Borgi was so grateful for this expression of friendship, especially during these times. I was very moved, very happy, and felt welcomed by this church, she said. When they arrived singing with all that affection, I felt special. Their daughter Antonella was born in June, and here she is at two months old. Isn't she precious? What a beautiful way to reach out to the new parents. You can read the whole story at the link in our bulletin. The September Recorder is in your homes, and it's also available online. And what a blessing it is this month. The cover story is one we shared just a few weeks ago in All God's People about Pastor Kevin Wilson of the Oceanside Church in Southeastern California Conference and his unique TikTok ministry. You won't want to miss the Bible quiz with Elder Alexander Bryant, the new president of the North American Division. And of course, the news and inspirational stories from around the union are focused on the amazing things happening during the pandemic in our local churches, schools, and institutions. The recorder is my favorite for Sabbath reading. Go to AdventistFaith.com recorder to read it online. Well, next week we start something new. Our Fall 2020 Media Week emphasis begins. What does that mean? Well, all God's people and segments in Pacific Sunrise and social media posts will center around one particular conference or educational institution from right here in the Pacific Union. These special close-up looks at our shared ministry will air weekly through the month of December. While we will still bring you important information and news as needed, the main focus will be on one entity. Next week, we look forward to Northern California Conference Week on All God's People. And we invite you to join us each week as we celebrate each entity and their unique history and ministry. And speaking of history, maybe you are of the age to remember where you were on December 7, 1941, when Pearl Harbor was bombed, or on November 22, 1963, when President Kennedy was shot, or January 28, 1986, when the Challenger space shuttle exploded. Those are days etched into our memories, and we remember where we were when they happened. Where were you on 9-11? At 8.46 a.m. Eastern Time on an unforgettable Tuesday morning 19 years ago, a hijacked passenger jet crashed into the World Trade Center, the first of the four jets that would bring America face to face with unimaginable tragedy and unprecedented courage. There were nearly 3,000 deaths in the attacks that morning in New York, Washington, D.C., and Pennsylvania. Fifty-five of those who died were military personnel killed in the attack on the Pentagon. All of the remaining deaths in the attacks were civilians. More than 90 countries lost citizens on the attacks on the World Trade Center. The entire world was united in mourning the loss. And it was exactly six months ago on March 11, 2020, that the World Health Organization declared the coronavirus outbreak had reached pandemic levels. And once again, the attention of the entire globe became riveted on a single issue. As the number of people impacted climbs into the tens of millions, and there is so much loss of life, the temptation is to become despondent or angry or fatalistic. As the pandemic continues to exact a toll on our daily lives and on so much of what matters, truly matters to us, the question that begins to form in our minds is, what should we do? It's not an easy question to answer, but I do find solace in the examples of three women of faith from the scriptures and in one simple text I learned from another. 
Faced with poverty and starvation, Ruth refused to be discouraged and went out to glean in the fields of Boaz, and God blessed her. Confronted by the cruel and murderous intentions of Haman, Esther took her life in her hands and appeared before the king, whose power was absolute, and God saved his people. Devastated by the crucifixion and death of Jesus, and yet motivated by love, Mary and the other women got up early on Sunday morning to attend to the details of burial, and they were met by the risen Lord. And it was my own mother who taught me the text that I'm thinking about today from my own King James Bible. It's found in 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. That's our prayer for all God's people and for our world on this September 11. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you back here next week.